Hello there world, I'm the Talking Horse Liam and today I want to talk about what is maybe the coolest update we've got for Elden Ring so far, at least in terms of PvP. I'm talking of course about patch 1.08 and the three giant colosseums that are now open across the lands between. Now it's important to note that there are actually a number of other interesting balance changes that come with this patch that are worth talking about and we'll do so in this video as well, but first there's a ton of stuff I want to say about the colosseums themselves. So for the uninitiated I'll quickly run down how it all works in the first place. You can use the timestamps to skip ahead if you are already on the level. There are three colosseums altogether that are found in Limgrave, Kaled and Lindel respectively that basically function as PvP arenas now. The way this works is that you have to make your way to each Colosseum individually first and interact with the Statue of Merica at the end of the room. There you can take part in the specific PvP fight modes that are different from Colosseum to Colosseum. But also once you've opened the Colosseum you can access its modes from this new statue next to the fireplace and round table hold. So once you've been to all Colosseums once this is probably where you join your arena fights as there are no sites of grace in or near the Colosseums themselves. There are three modes of battle to choose from. The Colosseum in Lindel unlocks classic 1v1 duels where you get 3 minutes to defeat your opponent, Crimson Flasks and Wondrous Physics are disabled, but you get 3 Cerulean Flasks to refill your FP during the fight. In Limgrave you unlock Combat Ordeals and United Combat. Both modes feature battles between 2 to 6 players where you get 5 minutes to accrue as many kills as possible. You get one Crimson and one Cerulean Flask as well as your Wondrous Physic at the start of the fight and then they refill each time you die. When you die you respawn pretty much immediately and can get back into the fight. Upon respawning you also trigger this small explosion effect so your opponents can camp at your spawn point and kill you as you spawn in. The difference between the two modes is that combat ordeals are basically free for alls where everyone fights for themselves while the united combats are team fights where you are put in teams of two or three players. And then there's the Colosseum in Kaled that features all three modes but here you are able to summon spirit ashes to fight at your side which leads to some of the most chaotic battles you've ever been in. For each mode there's a ranking system in place based of course on how often you kill or are killed and visualized by these different colored badges here in the menu that also show up next to your player's name during PvP. Right here I still got the lowest ones that are kinda grey silverish but as you rank up you'll see those turn a shining gold eventually. There don't seem to be any kind of rewards for ranking up or even like an actual leaderboard where you could see how well you're doing compared to other players yet, so that would be nice to get eventually. Now before talking about anything else I really want to highlight just how much fun these arena fights are. They are absolutely fantastic. When you have a free for all with 6 players who each can summon a spirit ash, the Colosseum really turns into an all out war zone with tons of big AoE spells and explosions just everywhere. Now is winning these skirmishes necessarily based on your skill alone? No, far from it, but is it fun? Hell yes. The duels are of course the place where you can really test your skill at the game in the most controlled environment, while with the sheer number of players fighting at the same time in the other two modes, dying from some off-screen attack is something that will happen to you here quite regularly. So I definitely advise against staying too low on vigor with your build here. In terms of connectivity, being around level 125 to 150 seems to be the most active level range at the moment. In fact, everything between level 100 and 200 seems to be pretty active now. So for duels you almost never have to wait longer than a couple of seconds, while fights with multiple players naturally take a little longer to come together. Now from my experience I would say that United Combat is a little more popular than the Battle or Deals at the moment and also the modes without Spirit Ashes seem to be favored. But I have also heard other people say the complete opposite. So if you're already fighting in the Colosseums, what's your experience in that regard? Let me know in the comments. So now I'd like to talk a little about the best builds and strategies for these new modes. Obviously for the 1v1 duels not much has changed compared to how the community has done them so far at the Raya Lucaria side of Grace, but the new balance changes of patch 1.08 that we'll talk about in a bit might still influence what the best options in terms of meta level play might be going forward. For the free for alls and team battles everything here is still based on my somewhat limited experience as I'm recording this only two days after the Colosseums opened. But the biggest most immediate learning for me is that big AOE type spells and attacks have a lot of potential here. 
Here you can see me using a faith build that basically only uses spells like the Ancient Dragon Lightning Strike, Elden Stars, Scarlet Ionia, Rotten Breath and so on. And just by virtue of players often being busy fighting among themselves, you're able to get some easy kills with those. Among the weapons, the Sacred Relic Sword with its Wave of Gold Ash of War really stands out, as it covers almost the entire arena and can hit for massive damage on the right build. But I actually enjoyed using my Sorcerer build the most so far, as it has a better variety of long-ranged and close-ranged attack options. It's also the build that has a really easy time stealing kills from your opponent, as it seems that whoever lands the final blow on an opponent is awarded the elimination point. So if two guys are going at it, getting their health nice and low, you can just swoop in at the end with two swift glintstone shards and get the kills yourself. You don't fight with honor. Yeah. But you'll also see a lot of the usual dual wielded spears, curved swords or straight swords as well as a bunch of other stuff. Right now people seem to still be experimenting a bit more, which is always a great time to do PvP in. So if you're taking part in the arena, comment below what your favorite build to run is currently, because I'm genuinely interested. For the Wondrous Physic, the Crimson Bubble Tier is still a great option as always, as it basically functions as a free preventive heal. And I also like the Cerulean Hidden Tier for the modes where Spirit Ashes are allowed, as it circumvents the FP costs when summoning them. This is something I'd probably use for all my melee builds, since I don't ever level mind at all there, and wouldn't have sufficient FP to summon most ashes otherwise. But you could also just use the Crimson Crystal Tier as another healing flask, or any of the Shrouding Tiers to buff your damage. For Spirit Ashes it might still be a little early to really pinpoint the best meta options, but already you can tell that some ashes that wouldn't usually be your first choice in PvE are actually quite good in PvP. I especially like the Mausoleum Soldiers as they give you 5 NPC enemies to fight alongside you. The Stormhawk is also kinda cool to annoy and distract your opponent as it moves a lot and is hard to hit. But also some of the classics like the Mimic tier for example are also kinda viable here, depending on your build of course. And finally using some long ranged spirit ashes like the Ancestral Follower might also not be the worst idea as they will hit players when they don't see it coming. Now I wanna switch to some stuff that I wouldn't say I wanna criticize, but at least I think there's still room for improvement. So first off, you can of course still use all consumables in these battles, which you might say, well, the of course you can, but that also includes starlight shards as well as raw meat dumplings, which can serve as another way to regain health or FP. Both these items are very limited during a regular playthrough, so if at any point people start using these items, everyone who can't or won't item dupe, or doesn't have the time to grind them out during Nugum Plusses, will be at a clear disadvantage. So this might not be the end of the world or anything for all of us just playing for fun, but if there are ever like real official tournaments to be held in Elden Ring or anything of the kind, I'd really like to see those two items in specific be disabled, as to not make having them something every build has to do in order to play optimally. Another thing is the visualization, or rather lack thereof, of the different teams in the United Combats. You do have different colored names for the different teams, but those you obviously only can see when locked on. And in these kind of multiplayer battles you really don't want to do that most of the time. There's also these yellow orbs floating above one team, but for some reason they sometimes seem to disappear at some point during the battle and I have no idea why. So some clearer way to tell who's on my and who's on the opposing team is something I'd appreciate. I guess it's nice not to have your character tinted in like a red or blue hue, like was the case in Dark Souls 3, but at least that made it unmistakably clear whose team you're on. Now the arenas themselves are all still pretty samey at the moment. Like they do look visually distinct in terms of color and their surroundings, but from a gameplay perspective they're all just large round spaces, sometimes with some pillars in them. Again, I don't want to seem like a negative Nancy here, FromSoft really did a stellar job with this update, but for the future I hope they do a little more with the actual arenas we fight in. Like some more obstacles would help with finding cover from spells, and they could also include traps like the platforms that shoot arrows when stepped on, or the fire spewing pillars that can be moved up or down that we already know from the catacombs. 
Some of the earlier footage we saw of the Colosseums also featured different PvE enemies taking part in the fights like the Lions from Castle Soul for example, so I really hope we'll see some more of that stuff with future updates. So that's the Colosseums, but as I said at the beginning of the video, along with them patch 1.08 also included some balance changes that seem to have fallen a little under the radar with the big news of course being the new PvP arenas. But some of them are pretty significant nonetheless. So let's quickly run them down as well. Since with the last patch they included the option to balance PvP separately from the normal game, we again have some PvP exclusive changes. For one they reduce the guard efficiency when attacking with your shield up for some weapons. So basically this means that shield poking with thrusting swords or spears has been made less safe, as you'll be more likely to be guard broken now when attacking from behind a shield. I haven't had the chance to really see this in action yet, but it's probably a welcome change as shield poke builds were never the most fun to fight against. They also reduce the poise damage of a variety of smaller weapon classes, including the regular thrusting swords that definitely needed this nerf most. Again it remains to be seen how this will affect weapon choices for meta level PvP, but definitely the right thing to do in my eyes. Beast Chill Sling's poise damage has also been reduced, which is fair, and the power of Carrion Slicer also got nerfed. Carrion Slicer was a really powerful spell, probably the best in the game in terms of damage to FP cost ratio, so it getting nerfed was also long overdue. And here at least I can tell you that it's still powerful enough to be used as a quick close ranged spell option and still does good damage on the right build, it's just not as ridiculously strong anymore. The rest of the changes affect both PvP as well as PvE, but some of them are definitely very PvP relevant. So dual wielded daggers, axes, hammers and flails got a speed and distance increase as well as some reduced recovery time. Twin blades, reapers, fists and claws also got a buff to speed and recovery time, just not the distance. These are of course, at least in part, weapon classes that weren't really the most popular choices in PvP, so making them a little more attractive is probably a good thing. They also again increased the speed of Colossal Sword crouching and rolling attacks slightly, basically going back a step from the nerf they made in the last patch. I personally didn't feel like they overdid it last time, but the Colossal Crouch strategy definitely was way less popular after that, so maybe they got it just right this time to where it's usable but not overpowered. Other notable changes include the reduced hitbox of the flame part of the Flaming Strike Ash of War, the reduced speed of thrusting and heavy thrusting sword crouch attacks, the reduced poise damage of the magic wave part of the Moon Vessel Ash of War, while increasing poise damage of the weapon slash part. They also reduced the poise damage of the crack blade Ash of War and, and this is probably more relevant for PvE, reduced the poise damage of the Flame of the Red Mains Ash of War. So overall a lot of smaller corrections that all seem to balance some of the more powerful choices in the right direction. I especially like to see the nerf to the crackblade skill as that quickly became very dominant in duels after the last patch. Among the bug fixes there is one that I wanna highlight here in particular. Fix the bug where stamina would replenish when switching to a crouching position while running. This is something a lot of players were doing in PvP as well as it being used by speedrunners to minimize the time they had to wait for their stamina to come back. And honestly I already thought this was more or less intended or at least an accepted outcome of how the crouch mechanic works, but apparently FromSoft considers this a bug and has now gotten rid of it. And I have to say I'm kinda happy it's gone just because having to deal with all the crouching and uncrouching if you wanted to play optimally was never something I enjoyed doing and I felt it made the characters in game look incredibly ridiculous. Once again I feel like FromSoft has done a great job with their balancing efforts, especially when it comes to PvP. Obviously the new arenas are the biggest addition of this patch, and as we said there might be some stuff that could still be improved, but overall I'd say they did a fantastic job with them. And now excuse me, I have to get back to fighting, so as always, thank you so much for watching, have a wonderful day, and see you all on the battlefield!